Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Glenn, and uh, in this video, I'll be, you know, talking to you about how to start a car hauling business. Uh, one of our, one of my viewers requested that um, some answer on that, so I will be, you know, going through the steps that uh, is needed in order to start a car hauling business. Now, um, car hauling business and um, hot shot and also tractor trailer um is it's basically it's the same step same procedure in order to start any of those business you could just say trucking it, it's the same procedure to start any of those trucking business now um there are two ways to go about this um one you could be an independent contractor where you sign on to someone else's um, authority uh, and uh, pull load. Um, in that sense, you would not have to register a company of your own or even get the MC, DOT or MC number because you would use that person's um, authority. You know, you'll use their, their DOT and MC number and also their company name. Um, you just uh, put a decal on your truck and operate on the, that person's uh, authority. So that's one way you could start. Um, the other way is to have your own authority. Now, in order to have your own authority, uh, it's, it, you would have to register with your Secretary of State for your state that you're living in. Um, and uh, there are a few ways in which you could do the registration you could do it by yourself and also your cpa could do it for you and uh, there are some companies like legal zoom that will able to do the registration for you as well now legal zoom will charge a fee in order to do it um, in the state that i'm in uh, it costs 500 dollars for the secretary of state uh, fee in order to register a company 500 dollars in the state that I'm in, and then um, legal Zoom uh, charge two hundred and fifty dollars to to do the application for you to do the process. So um, would total like seven hundred and fifty dollars as a startup for that part uh, for um, registering a company. Now, either way you're going, whether you're gonna um, be an independent contractor uh, signing up under someone else's um, authority or you're gonna have your own business, the next step would be is to know what, what kind of equipment you're gonna be using in the sense that uh, what, what uh, truck, what trailer you will be using because that is very important. Now, if you are a non-CDL driver, then you know your equipment has to be um, under 20, 26,000 pounds or under. If you are a CDL driver, then there's no limit. <laughs> I could say that there's no limit. The only thing um, with, the, with that is the CDL driver. There is a there is a length um, specification of how long your combination is. If it exceeds sixty-five feet long, then um, you would have to change up your um, your unit if you have, and I'm speaking now, sorry, I should let you know. I'm speaking if you're using like a pickup truck, a dually, if you're using a dually, because that's mainly what I'm talking about here in order to, to do the, this type of trucking business. So if you have a dually that has the bed on it and um, it stretches with your trailer, it stretches longer than 65 feet, then of course you would have to, um, take the bed off and I guess you guys have seen a few of those on the road you'll take the bed off and then now it would categorize now as a as a tractor instead of um, a pickup truck so the pickup truck length cannot be cannot exceed 65 feet but if you take the bed off it can go longer than that I'm not sure if there's a limit to how long um, because there are some trailers that uh, some guys pull, which is like 50 feet trailer. I mean, 50 feet um, usable space. 
plus the um the neck of the trailer and, and, and other stuff like that would extend probably another eight to ten feet so it, it, it you got to know what equipment you're going to be using um for non-cdl you have to remain under the twenty six thousand pounds right at twenty six thousand pounds are under if you're one pound over then that's cdl cdl um category you, you have gone into and uh that's hefty fines for that okay so um so that takes care of um how you start out now the second thing is your equipment what are you going to use to 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 work with um non-cdl it's kind of tedious whether you are doing hot shotting or you're just uh doing car hauling you have to make sure that you do not exceed weight limit very important got to make sure you do not exceed weight limit so you got to remember that you're you're a non-cdl so you got to stick to that under twenty six thousand pound weight limit so get into your trailer first of all you got to know what's the um what's the, the the rating on the truck itself which most of the dualies are fourteen thousand uh, I'm not sure if the new ones are are are, are more, but um, most of them are fourteen thousand. So you would want a trailer that is rated at um, twelve thousand pounds, um, which if you buy like from any company, whatsoever you buy from, whether Kaufman or any of the other uh, trailer company, they can derate the tr the the trailer specs to to 12,000 pounds, even if it's a 15 or 16,000 uh, pound trailer, they could derate it to 12,000 pounds. Um, with that said, you got to make sure now that um, you know the weight of your equipment. I mean, when I want to say the equipment, I mean both of them together now, the truck and the trailer. How much does that weigh uh, empty? You got to know because um, the, the, the remainder from that would be your payload that you can carry. Uh, if you have a trailer, say your trailer weighs 6,000 pounds um, and your truck weighs um, the 14,000 pound, then probably you'll be able to carry around maybe 8,000 pound in um, 8,000 pounds in, in payload uh, because, because um, you would have 6,000 pounds different from, from the uh, trailer plus there's would be another maybe two thousand pounds that the truck bed uh could carry so when you combine everything maybe you could carry like eight thousand pounds eight thousand pounds is definitely like two cars um maybe like two under or 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 and smaller cars um if the cars are too heavy there are some cars that are over four thousand pounds um you got to be careful of those like the bmw and the BM yes, the BMW um, 7 Series and also the, the Mercedes-Benz um, S Series. Those are heavy cars, so you would have to be careful. Now, um, SUV also, they are, they are also within that same weight range. So you got to know how you're picking your, 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 your load um, in order not to exceed exceed your weight limit so um that is it for choosing your your equipment that you're going to be using and that's the second step after registering your company you got to know what um what uh, equipment you're going to be using now the next piece is their insurance insurance can be um can be tricky uh it's very expensive um the liability insurance is going to be very expensive um you're going to need cargo insurance and um, liability insurance. There are some uh, load boards and stuff that requires, um, not really a load board, but like the, 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 the shippers and stuff require you to have a general liability as well, but not much of them. There are a few that requires that. But uh, general liability is an add-on, so it's, it's not that expensive. Maybe, maybe between four and $700 um, per year as the add-on for that. For the general liability but the liability is what is what the, where the expense is at um, especially for a new startup it's pretty expensive
and there are some companies that has like the umbrella insurance that um, they will just put a lot of vehicle under one umbrella so the rate the insurance rate can be reduced and it could be cheaper now um, looking for insurance liability insurance it can span anywhere from like twelve thousand dollars to up to twenty thousand dollars you know depends on depending on your driving record and habits and stuff like that um maybe credit score i'm not sure but um a lot of things comprise together in order to 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 give you um a quote on your insurance so it would be somewhere between Twelve thousand and uh, twenty thousand dollars. Um, I see people pay. Uh, when I was pulling my um, my setup that I started with, I used to pay like about twelve thousand dollars for my um, my liability, and uh, another uh, two thousand eight hundred dollars for my um, cargo insurance, and I pay four hundred and fifty dollars for general liability because I just throw everything in because there are some companies, you know, that wants general liability as well. So I just just put it on so that um, I was able to pull load from, from just about anywhere. So that's, that's another cost that you have to think of, your insurance. Um, the most expensive part would be your equipment, of course, your, your um, setup, truck and trailer. That is going to be your most expensive part of it. And um, the second would be your insurance. Um, then uh, after that, uh, you are going to need to apply to the FMCSA for your MC number, um, your motor carriage number, and um, you want to do uh, interstate and not intrastate. Interstate, that means you can cross state line any state. But um, intrastate, you got to remain within the state where you are registered. So you would have to do the interstate. Usually this process take about two, anywhere from two to eight weeks. And um, although on the website it may say six to eight weeks, but I got mine in two weeks time. So I'm going to say between two to eight weeks. <laughs> I'm not sure if that will work for everybody, but it works for me. So um, that's what I would say between eight, between two and eight weeks. Uh, you would have to apply for your MC. Um, you could do it on your own, but um, your insurance would have to accompany that because the, the insurance is, is the thing that keeps your MC alive. That's what keep it, keeps it active. So you have to have insurance at all times in order to have an active MC number. If you, if you, if you um, cancel your insurance, then automatically your, your MC is going to cancel as well. So you got to do some shopping. Uh, to make sure that you have um, insurance that you can afford. Although some in most insurance company will ask you to pay, do a, a deposit, uh, pay down, um, you know, whether 10 or 20% of the cost of the insurance, and then they spread the difference over like a 10, 10 months that you would have to pay the, dif pay the, pay the difference to offset that, um, which is not bad. It's a good thing. I used to do that because it helped, it helped me a lot. Because I, I, I could not come up with $12,000 um, right off the bat in order to pay all, of, all that for insurance. So I stretch it out. You may pay a little, end up paying a little bit more because they're going to charge you like, um, you know, interest and stuff. But um, it's not much more, but um, it, it helps. So that's what I did. So th that's the four steps in order to, um, to start your own, own transportation business. Um, trucking business, um, your uh, your business license, um, your equipment, your insurance, and your MC. Very important. So um, there you have it. But as I said before, if you want to um, if you want to 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 work under somebody else's authority, you could. Um, there's it's not illegal. It's legal. Just that you have to. It has to be documented on, you know, by the person allowing you to use theirs, you know, so you can start that way. But as I would say, one of the, the things that um, allows you to have your MC is your insurance. And if you're even going to run under someone else's um, authority, you would still have to insure your, your, your equipment. 
and um, both uh, liability and um, cargo. And if I just think if I have to do that, to work under somebody else's authority, I may just do it on my own, of my own authority, I should say, because I, I would have to pay, pay the same for insurance and the, just the same way. So the, the only difference is to apply for the business, um, your business um, license, which is another five to seven to eight, say eight hundred dollars, because depending on who, which company you get, if you do it for yourself, it's five hundred dollars. Um, but they may ask you for like um, a resident office and stuff like that, which cannot be your your address. It has to be some different address and stuff. But you can do it for yourself. Because uh, my first business, I did go through legal Zoom, but uh, the second one I did it on my own, and um, it's that's still active and everything. So, so that's what it is. Get your business license. Uh, get your um, know what equipment you're going to be using. Get your insurance and uh, apply for your MC. And um, that's how you start your business. Uh, no, there are, there are a few more things that I have to share, which I'll put in another video on, um, you know, after, after you start things to expect, um, you know, your, your, um, your um, expense, you got to calculate your expenses you know, fuel, everything, you got to document everything, you got to keep receipts, because um, when you file your taxes, you're going to need these, these stuff for it. You know, there are a lot of, lot more stuff, or a few more stuff, I should say, that, um, that accompanies the business. Um, but the biggest is your expense. You got to make sure that you calculate it right. And um, not because you just started out, you don't want to, I know, the, you know, sometimes the, 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 the the eagerness of just wanting to start working you may you may bid on some loads like cheap but no don't do that because you're gonna be you're gonna ex operate at a loss if you do that because you have a lot of things to take care of now if you if you lease a vehicle there's basically two things that you would have to to uh, be responsible for your tires and um oil change i think those are the two things that you would be responsible for, but everything else would, would be taken care of by the leasing company. Um, if it's your own vehicle, if you buy this vehicle, uh, whether you're doing payments or not, I mean, you purchase it, uh, this is yours, then everything you would be responsible for. Um, your oil change, your tires, you know, whatever service, or whatever point of service needed, you know, you would have to take care of all of those. But, um, if you know how to run your business, if you you know how to pick loads, you know loads that pay well, you know keep an eye out for that. You know work some strategy. If you see something going on the road, and at the same time you see something going somewhere else that you think you know could make a good deal for you, then just pick wisely. That's all. You know don't be too cheap, and at the same time don't be too too um, expensive because. You may not you may not get any any jobs if you are too expensive, um, and you don't want to be too cheap because you may operate at a loss, and then you're breaking these brokers bad, and you don't wanna you don't want to do that. You want to just be reasonable that you can you are in this thing to to make money, and um, just remember that. All right. So those are the four key points to start a business. If you have any other questions, you can let me know. I will try to answer those questions for you if or research it to get answers for you but there you have it guys um keep that entrepreneurial spirit and um, just go out there start your business do what you have to do and um, just make that money thanks for watching please like share and subscribe my videos thank you guys all the best see you in the next one all the best